Well, welcome back and or welcome anew. I'm Joseph McClendon III, and in the wings is Christian, and he is producing this. And we are here to help you do exactly what the name implies, and that is to assist you in going further, faster, in becoming more wealthy. And around here, wealthy means to be healthy, happy, and financially abundant. And today is a very special day because it's just going to be me. And you and I are going to make an investment. Matter of fact, you and I are going to make a real estate investment. Now, don't get it twisted. You already own the real estate. I'm going to be your partner in this, if you'll allow me to. We're going to invest in that six inches of real estate between your ears. Uh, That six inches of real estate, which you are the landlord, you are the overseer, the caretaker. And because you are, you have the ability to change it. And as we get started, remember this that the quality of our thoughts is the quality of our life, or said differently, the quality of our wealthiness. So grab a pad and paper and get ready, and I'll be right back. And we're going to talk about that investment. So if you're like most people, matter of fact, I'm going to say all people, you got a brain that just doesn't shut up. As a matter of fact, that's the way we're designed. It never stops. Even when we go to sleep, it's yak, 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 pictures, pictures, pictures. It's constantly going. Even when we're occupied by something else like our cell phones or or television or something like that, it's constantly going. And that's the good part because without the brain working, the body wouldn't work. But the bad part is we have what's called runaway thoughts. And those runaway thoughts oftentimes are what we call getting lost in a rabbit hole. I know I have uh, that I will (laughs) do things like I'll grab my cell phone and I just mean to go on and and check my Instagram just for a second and I'll wake up an hour, an hour and a half later and I've been scrolling through this thing or I'll sit down to watch a program on television and all of a sudden time is gone. We all do that. Well, the same happens with our mind as well. And so I'm going to start off by saying this. When I was in my early, early 20s, I saw this guy on television. His name was Robert Allen. And Robert Allen, uh, one of the first people that was teaching people how to flip houses. And he had an infomercial on there. And he said, listen, you come to my seminar and I'm going to show you how to buy houses and then turn those houses into residual income. And he said, and don't worry if you don't have any money. That's why you need to show up because the name of the course and the name of his book is called Nothing Down. And so I got excited about it. I bought the course and it was like $300 and that was a lot of money back then. It still is. But I went back and I went to the course and I sat and listened to him and he did teach us. Matter of fact, he told us at the end of the course, he said, I just taught you 50 ways to buy houses for no money down. And he said, You don't need all 50. And he's a matter of fact, there were 300 people in the course. And he said, out of the 300 of you that are here, maybe 10 of you are actually going to buy a house. And he said, out of that 10, maybe two of you are going to buy another house. And out of that two, maybe one of you are going to go on and do what I say. And when he said that, I was, I've always been that kind of person. You challenge me, I'm going to step up to it. Plus, that was all the money I had at the time, and I was bound to make this happen. I was there to make this happen. But the reason I share this with you is it wasn't just what he taught us how to, how to buy these houses, because one of the things, by the way, he said, it doesn't mean that you're not giving the seller money. It just means you're using something called OPM, other people's money. And we're going to come back to that here in a second, because we're going to be using OPT, other people's thoughts, uh, to help us go further faster. Make a long story short, at the end of the course, I went out, and within a year and a half's time, I bought 26 houses. And I still benefit from those houses to this day. And that was back in the 80s. And the reason I share all of that with you is it wasn't just that I had the knowledge. It wasn't just that I had the information and the strategies to do stuff. So did everybody else. What I had, I, I need to stop calling it a secret weapon because it's not a secret. It's, you know, everybody, everybody has access to things, was I had the good fortune, if you will, to be taught how to change my thoughts, to be taught how to shift how I thought. And as a result of that, the things that came up with most people, and even though they did come up with me, fear of failure, fear of success, self-doubt, self-loathing, imposter syndrome, fear of rejection, all of those things that would show up, 
I had a way to, at the very least, mitigate those things, get beyond them and do what was necessary to get done. And so that's what we're going to talk about today here is this. We all have thoughts that are constantly going. Now, around here in neuroencoding at the Institute, we call that your psychology. And don't get that twisted. Don't get freaked out about it. Psychology are just the consistent thoughts that we all have consciously and unconsciously about ourselves, other people, and the world around us or our environment. That's it. What you think about yourself, you know, as that, that old saying says, if you think you can or you think you can, you're absolutely right. <laughs> and so by learning how to adjust those things, then you can absolutely shift the activity, the feelings that you're going to have and the activities that you're going to take. Now, the trick to it is this, is that, like I said in the very beginning, we never stop thinking. And thinking are just the words that we're saying, questions that we're asking inside of our heads and the pictures that we're making. And it's a constant flow. It never stops. And so I was thinking about this the other day, no pun intended, and I was looking at it and I thought, well, gosh, if it never stops, then we are at the mercy of whatever that stream of thoughts are. And so I sat back and I did some meditation and I recognized, and I've got some really great friends, Dr. Deepak Chopra and, oh gosh, the list goes on and on that people, and Master Ko, who, who are the uh, absolute masters at, at uh, meditating and things like that. And I thought, okay, well, what is meditation? Because when I sit down and meditate, I don't know about you, but my brain still doesn't shut up. I'm supposed to be thinking about this mantra or thinking about, you know, watching the thoughts go by and everything. But in the back of my head, it's going, you know, thinking about putting tires on the car or, or you know, what I'm going to do later or so on and so forth. And I have to constantly remind myself to come back to center and just enjoy the now. And so it dawned on me that that because it never stops, then we are the product of the, the back and forth between those thoughts inside of our heads said differently. There was those thoughts that were thinking about, you know, other things that I had to do. Like I said, put tires on the car or take the dog for a walk or what I'm going to do when I'm finished meditating or whatever. And then there was the thoughts that are going, hey, dude, chill out. It's your time to relax. You deserve this. It's okay. And it's that back and forth. The one that wins or the ones that are the one that is the most prominent is the way that I feel most of the time. And so, I want you, if you're, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down because that's what this is all about. That's what we're doing all the time. It's called confluence of thought. Confluence of thought. And what that means, if you look it up in the dictionary, <laughs> when was the last time you looked in a dictionary? If you look it up on, if you Google it or you do what I do is I always just ask Siri, the definition of confluence is the joining of two or more rivers. Now, there's other definitions and there's other, other things, but it really comes down to the delta, if you will, where two or more things meet. But I like that definition because it says rivers. And what are rivers doing? They're constantly flowing. They never stop. And when they meet, the one that is flowing the hardest, the most, with the most volume, is the one that is really going to take over, but it's still going to be a mix of those thoughts down the road. And so what happens inside of our brains all the time is we're constantly thinking, we're constantly have a river of thoughts. So instead of trying to stop it, which by the way, you can, and it's one of the things we teach in neuroencoding, and, and it is actually a necessity uh, to do so by interrupting those thoughts and replacing it with something else. We can do that. However, it's a lot more gentle and it's a lot more, let's say, um, uh, digestible, if you will, and palatable by the average person to just start using OPT, other people's thoughts. And when I say other people's thoughts, that is this. Whether you want to make more money, whether you want to have a better body, whether you want to be happier, relationships or whatever it is, there's already somebody out there that's doing what you want to do at a higher level than you are, always. My dad used to say, listen, you can learn something from everybody, anybody. You can teach something, but you can also learn something from everybody. And so that's the way I approach it. And so when it comes down to, for example, when I wanted to do real estate, I went and I, I did OPT with Robert Allen. Those are his thoughts. 
And at the time, by the way, I was also studying psychology and I went to him and just a real quick story, a little backtrack just a little bit. His plan was, he said, if you buy two houses a year for 10 years, at the end of 10 years, you'll have X amount of houses and you'll have X amount of residual income. The houses are going to be becoming worth more, but you're going to be paying down the mortgage and you'll be getting rent for these homes. So you'll be making money. Well, I didn't have that kind of time. I was in my 20s and I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to get on the road. And uh, so I went to him and I said, Mr. Allen, well, by the way, Robert Allen's a dear friend of mine now. I've, I've seen him uh, several times through the years. Um, I said, look, your plan is two houses a year for 10 years. What if I buy 10 houses a year for two years? And he burst out laughing and he actually got the class. He goes, hey, everybody, listen, this is this question that this guy asked. He said, of course you can do it, but you've got to think differently, Joseph. And when he said that, I'm going, okay, well, this is my wheelhouse. I know this. And what he said was this, and I want you to listen real close to what I say. You don't need everything. You don't have to know everything in order to do something. He said, I taught you 50 ways to buy houses. You don't need all 50. You just need one. He said, I call it the cookie cutter method. Find one that works for you and do that one. Some people study the fruit. I'm sorry. Some people study the root and some people pick the fruit. He said, pick the fruit of the ones that are there, the low hanging fruit and eat it. And you can study the other stuff because what a lot of other people get are going to get caught up in the paralysis of analysis, which is, oh, I got to learn all this other stuff. I got to learn all this other stuff. No, you don't. And that comes down to exactly what I'm going to teach you here today as well. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to know everything about how you function. Your, your, your sympathetic and your autonomic nervous system, your, your, uh, you don't have to know any of that stuff. You just do the do and borrow my thoughts, if you will, which, by the way, these aren't all my thoughts. I've got I've had and continue to have some amazing, amazing mentors and teachers that helped me along the way. And so he said, use the cookie cutter method. He said, the other thing is most of you are going to if you do buy a house, you'll get scared and you'll, you'll feel like, oh, I got all this pressure and you won't go further. And he said, what you have to do is you got to be OK with being scared. Now, he's saying all these things to me in the back of my mind. I'm going, all this guy is doing is telling me how he thinks. And another word for thinking is believing what you're believing. And another word for believing is whatever you've said to yourself over and over and over and over again about yourself, about other people and about the world around you. And so I was living in a place called Lancaster, California at the time. And it was about an hour and a half away from Los Angeles. And on my way home, I remember thinking, okay. Well, and, and by the way, I had I had been utilizing this process in lots of other things in my life as well to get ahead. But on my way home, I was just saying to myself, OK, this is what he said. I'm going to say it. And I would literally I said to myself, probably I want to say 500 times on the way home. Use the cookie cutter method. You don't have to know everything. Just do something. And a half a dozen other things that he said. And I said those things over and over to, to myself and get you know what? Those were the things that became my dominant thoughts. Now, the reason I say that is this. Those were his words, his thoughts. I didn't have to know any of the details of all that stuff. I just said it over and over and over to myself. Half a dozen things. I said them over and over to myself. And so by the time I got home, I was buzzing. It's probably 11 o'clock at night and I was buzzing. I couldn't go to sleep. And all I was thinking about was, okay, what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do tomorrow? which, by the way, we do, would do alumni um, meetings. The, the class would get back together, you know, like, uh, you know, once or twice a year, that group of 300 and actually more people. And, you know, I was the only person in that classroom that went on. I was that one guy, if you will. And I would talk to them and I'd talk to people and they'd the, all of the I'm not going to call them excuses because they were just thoughts that these people were saying was, well, I got back and, you know, I had to get back to work and I had to do this and I had to do that. And and time took over and I just didn't, you know, have time to study and do all this stuff and everything. And I thought to myself, well, what's the difference between me and them? Well, the difference was, first off, there, there wasn't a lot of difference because I had a, a job. I was working an eight-hour job, seven days, I mean, sorry, five days a week. I was also in college. So to say that, uh, that I didn't have a lot of time was a, an understatement of biblical proportions, if you will. So it wasn't that I was, that they were busier than me. 
It's just that, like I said, when they got home, they got home and started to and got involved in all of the thoughts and all the things that were going on around them. When I got home, because I had done that, I repeated those things over and over to myself. I was a buzz. And like I said to you, all I could think about is what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do tomorrow? And by the way, I just said those things over and over and, and as, as a host of other things that I'm going to share with you in a little bit over and over again, consistently all the time. I'd wake up in the morning and, and that's what I would say to myself over and over again until pretty soon that became the, wait for it, psychology. And so those things that I had repeated over and over again, again, became my thoughts, became my river, became my overwhelming river. And it wasn't any, it, it, it wasn't rocket science. It wasn't that I had to really, really convince myself of something. I just said it over and over again. Now, I, I, always, I always bring this up, the Neuro Encoding Institute. And remember, Neuro Encoding is just programming yourself to default to your best behavior. One of our, matter of fact, our number one founding p uh, pillar um, rule is to assassinate complexity, meaning make it so simple that anybody can do it. If you overcomplicate things, then people don't do things. And so, uh, again, at the time, I didn't have the, uh, the um, technology that I have now, and I didn't have the explanation of it, nor was I even looking to do that. I wanted to be a musician. I just knew through repetition, it would change my thoughts. And so, what my encouragement to you is, Whatever you want to do, I think I said this before, whatever you want to do, whether it's make money, build a better body, or be wealthy in any way, find somebody else that's already doing it and model their thoughts. And nowadays, it's easier than ever. I had the privilege of being in front of Robert Allen to ask him these questions, but you don't have to do that now. Now there's this thing that all the kids are using. It's a crazy new thing called the internet. <laughs> And there's YouTube videos. You can, you can listen to interviews about people. You, and there's hundreds and thousands of people that are already doing what you want to do, whatever it is. And uh, you know, I've got a dear friend. His name is Titus. Matter of fact, Titus was, uh, if you go back, he's, he was on, uh, we did a podcast with him here. And Titus is in his mid to late 50s. And this guy looks 35 or 40 years old. And so, in talking to him, as a matter of fact, if you go back and you listen to his interview, and you can go on on uh, on Instagram and look up Titus Unlimited, and this guy is just phenomenal. And every day he's telling you what to think. Every day he'll give you some advice. You don't have to have them all. Grab one of them that feels good to you and repeat it over and over and over and over again. Yes, it is that ridiculously simple. Because here's the way the human brain works. Here's the way the human being works. I call it human physics. You may have heard me talk about it before. Physics is obviously at its simplest form. It is the study of the cause and the effect of movement. When something moves, that is the cause and the effect is whatever happens. If you pull a string on this end, that movement is going to cause whatever that string is attached to, to move, or at the very least, that end of the string to move. That's how the universe works. It's constantly going all the time. It's always pressure, release, pressure, release, pressure, release. That's all what it is all the time. And so, human physics, in its simplest form, is any movement that a human being makes, if they continue to do that, the more they do it, the more they will do it and the better at it they'll get. What does that mean? You want to go you know, learn how to drive a car, ride a bicycle, tie your shoes. Anything that you do right now has come from you did it over and over again. And then you got muscle memory, you got nervous system memory, you got memory memory, you got all that stuff until pretty soon it becomes part of your psychology. It becomes part of who you are by doing it over and over again. And if that works, which it does, then doesn't it make sense if you wanted to change one of those rivers? All you would do is decide what it is that you want to think. What are the best words for you to think? What are the best things for you to think about? Do it over and over again. And guess what? You'll not only get good at it, it will fade into your unconscious and it'll just become the river of who you are. And when you say, as soon as that happens, by the way, so, you know, I mean, obviously I'm going to give you something to do because as I always promise with further, faster, here it isn't just listening to me, yak, yak, yak. I'm going to give you something to do. But the do 
is the thing that produces the results. Always. And that's part of human physics as well. Whatever you do, you're going to, re- you're going to get better at. And there's a way of speeding up the process as well. Repetition is the mother of all skill. Well, my question to you is, what is the father? If repetition is the mother of all skill, what is the father? And there is a father. And by father, I mean, what is the one uh, that is, uh, I hope I don't sound uh, too uh, chauvinistic when I say this. What is the, the head of the, what is the one that makes everything happen, if you will? Now, it's obvious it's a metaphor, but we're going to take a break here shortly. When I come back, I'm not only going to answer that question, but I'm also going to give you some OPT, not just my thoughts, but thoughts of other people and give you something to do so that you can influence that confluence of thought that goes on with you constantly. And on the other side of it, you'll think differently. And as you think differently, as I said at the top of this session, the quality of your thoughts is the quality of your life. So I'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. And we're going to talk more about how to influence that confluence of thought. Hey, what's good? It's me, Joseph McClendon III. And let me get real with you just for a second. Now, you've probably heard me talk about this before, something that I call the thieves of our dreams. Procrastination, hesitation, fear of failure, fear of success, self-doubt, self-loathing, imposter syndrome, and fear of rejection. Well, let me ask you a question. What if you could not only retrain your brain and your nervous system to automatically default to your absolute best thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, but you could also do the same for others that are going through difficult times and challenges in their own lives and things that are stopping them from creating the life of their desires. Well, this is what I call neuroencoding. And at the risk of sounding arrogant, these are the same tools, methods, and strategies in neuroscience that I've used to operate in the upper 5% of all my own businesses, especially as a coach, a speaker, and a presenter for the last 30 plus years. The Neuroencoding Institute provides you with the knowledge, the tools, and unmatched support to become a certified neuroencoding specialist and guide you to the life of wealthiness. And remember, wealthy means to be healthy, happy, and financially abundant. Go to neuroencoding.com com to speak to an enrollment specialist today, and I look forward to serving you at the highest level. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore a complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash angel phoenix productions. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm excited to share with you what I teased at the beginning of or or before the break. And that is that I'm going to teach you and let you borrow some OPT. And they're not just my thoughts, but they're other people's thoughts as well. I don't use myself as some shining example of the way that things should be. And I do use myself as an example of what is possible because I do this stuff. I don't teach theory. And so I'm before we left, before we went for the break, I talked to you about the repetition is the mother of all skill. Well, what is the father? The father is praise, praise. And what that means is this. When you do something, if you just do it over and over again, you're going to get good at it, but it's going to take a while. Repetition takes a while. You got to repeat something over and over again. But your nervous system is designed like this. When you get pleasure or pain about something, it's going to be the decision of whether you continue or don't continue to do it. If you stick your hand in the flame and you get burned, that's intense pain, and your brain goes, don't do that again. You only need to do that once. If you do something over and over again, or if you do something that's pleasurable, really pleasurable, the brain is going to go, that feels good, do it again. Now, the brain works like this. Anytime it is given pleasure, mechanically inside the brain, you're going to release something called dopamine and and, uh, endorphins and oxytocins and things like that that make you feel good. But the brain is always going to go, what just happened right before I got this this hit of, of euphoria? And it will say, well, whatever I did, meaning I repeated something or, or I, I said something or I did something, let's do it again, and it'll start to trigger itself. Now, that's all you got to know. You don't have to know anything more about psychology, about how this works, but that's what we're going to be doing here. And so, um, remember before I said your psychology are the thoughts that you have about yourself, other people, and the world around you. And so, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you what I do uh, and what I've done for a long time for my own self-certainty. 
and my own confidence. And remember, confidence is not arrogance. Confidence is just that feeling th uh, that you can do something and that you will do something, that you're capable, that you're worthy, all of those things. And so that comes from, again, it, on the negative side, if you don't have confidence, it's not just because somebody said something about you or you failed at something. It's that that you repeated over and over in your, in your head. Trauma happens once. Meaning, meaning something bad happens one time, but we keep it alive in our head by reliving, by reliving it. There's not a, plan, a person on the planet that has changed the past by telling the same story over and over again. You can't do it. So you got to change a different story. And so the thought that I'm going to give, that I'm going to tell you about, encompasses several things. And you can borrow mine, and I also encourage you to make your own up. Even as silly as it might sound, make your own up. Especially, and by the way, use this tool. I said in the beginning, I, I need to stop calling it my secret weapon. It is my secret advantage uh, to doing things. Because anytime I want to go do something, I go find people like Christian here, who is already better at it than I am. And I talk to him and I go, well, what about this? What about this? And I listen to what he says or somebody says, and I just say that to myself over and over and over again until pretty soon that becomes my belief. And that's how I can get as good as I get as quickly as I do at the risk of sounding arrogant. And then I add to it. Once I do it, I praise myself. I'll tell you how to do that here in a moment. And so the statement that I'm going to give you now, and again, let me reiterate that you can and should add to this and be specific about it as well. Whatever it is that you want to go after. As I say to myself over and over again, I, Joseph McClendon III, am a God-guided expression of health, wealth, happiness, and joy. I believe that life is exactly what you dare to make it, and fortune favors the bold. And I'm honored to be here and to be part of other people's lives to create even more wealth for other people's lives. Now, that's mine. I've said that's over and over again. Obviously, I've memorized it. But you can take that or whatever you want. And it is really, really worth the time to do it. It's worth the time to sit down and write out an identity statement. Because, by the way, if you look at it, all three of those things that are that I said m what I believe about myself. I said I, Joseph McClendon III, am a God-guided expression of health, wealth, happiness, and joy. And then I said for other people. Then, I, because remember, it is uh, your your psychology is what you think about yourself, other people, in the world around you. I, Joseph McClendon III, talks about me. Yes, this is what I believe about me. I'm a God-guided expression of health, wealth, happiness, and joy for myself and everybody that I have the privilege of touching their lives. That means other people as well. And I believe that I am put here to enhance the lives of other people, whatever it is. And, and so I encompassed all of those things in that saying. Look, you may not be as poetic as that. You may want to write down just, I'm awesome, I'm amazing. But guess what? I say that over and over and over again. I'll put on music, which I'm going to encourage you to do, and I'll get excited about it. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. You will be amazed. Remember when I said I came home from that seminar by the time I got home? I couldn't sleep. I was a buzz. What am I going to do tomorrow? What do I get to do tomorrow? And guess what? It worked on all of those things that I talked about. Procrastination, hesitation, fear of failure, fear of success, self-doubt, self-loathing, imposter syndrome, and fear of rejection. All of those things at the very least started to mitigate. That doesn't mean that they don't show up every once in a while. They do. But guess what? I don't spend a lot of time there. Matter of fact, I always say all of those things are fear. There's no fearless people, but there are people who fear less. And less does not mean the, um, the quantity... It means the time. I spend less time there. If something comes up, look, I'm human like everybody else. So when something comes up that scares me or I'm afraid of, then guess what? I will go through that, but I automatically, because I've neuroencoded myself, which by the way, this simple process that I'm giving you right now is in neuroencoding yourself. You're programming yourself. So my brain automatically goes to, wait a minute, I, Joseph McClendon III, I'm a God, God, expression of health, wealth, happiness, joy for myself and everybody that have the privilege of touching their lives. And guess what? That lives inside of me. What do you want to live inside of you? What do you want to live inside of you? And so here's what you can do. 
You can take those words that I just said, and hopefully I think we'll put it in the description here. <laughs> uh, if not, go back and listen to it, re you know, rewind this, listen to it again, and write those down for yourself and or create something for yourself because you don't just have one, by the way. I got lots of them, lots of them. And so write them down and then schedule it. Tell Siri to remind you to go through your identity statement for the next 10 days for 10 minutes. And all you do is repeat it over and over again. And at the end of it, you smile. You just put a smile on your face or you pat yourself on the back or you shake your butt or you do something, you do some sort of dance or something and praise yourself for it for all the reasons that I said before. What happens is your nervous system is going to grab a hold of that and goes, well, what just happened before I got this praise? By the way, self-praise is some of the most effective. Obviously, most of us like to hear praise and compliments from other people, but guess what? Your body and your brain is yearning and that is to be praised by you. You are the father. You're the mother and the father. <laughs> And so praise yourself and you start to use what I call human mechanics, human mechanics, as well as human physics, because the physics is repeating it over and over again. You're going to get better at what? You're going to get better at believing that stuff because it doesn't take long before that becomes part of your belief. But that becomes the river that flows the most. So when other stuff comes up, well, why don't I do this? Well, what's wrong with me? All of a sudden, you're going to find yourself correcting yourself and snapping out of it. And if there's one tool, there one thing that I would say, I, I, I want to make sure that people get a handle on, and that is snapping themselves out of those unresourceful uh, thoughts, states, feelings, and things like this, and, and that. And this is one way of, for lack of a better term, gently doing it. Look, if you come into my office and you got a fear of dogs, there's going to be a dog in the office, and we're going to deal with it right now. But it ain't going to be gentle. You're going to go through it and, and we're going to snap out of it. And at the end of that hour, you're going to hold that dog. You're going to be fine. And then I'm going to give you something to do that is similar to what I just taught you here, that on your, uh, that when, you're, when I'm not around, it grows and grows and you get better and better at it as well. And so the reason I share all of this stuff with you is the, si the assignment for you to do. Super, super simple. Please. It is my honor and I humbly offer you my thoughts and if you don't like my thoughts, find somebody else's, which I encourage you to do. And get in the habit of making your own up. It is a skill. And that skill will serve you for the rest of your life. Because all the way back at the top of this, I said, we are constantly being bombarded by advertisements, by social media, by television, by entertainment. We were never meant to be entertained all the time. You know, I'm old enough to remember when there were three TV, st four television stations. Now there's thousands and it never stops, including YouTube and all those things. Take a break, take a few minutes, 10 minutes to be exact every day. Say some words that empower you. Say some words that are going to make that investment into that real estate between your ears. And remember this, life is always, always exactly what you dare to make it and fortune favors the bold. So the trick to life is always to boldly step up and dare to make your life magnificent. I look forward to serving you even further and I'll see you at the top. This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.